What's up nerds? My name's Noah. Welcome to Table Ready and today we are going to be pushing ChatGPT and I'm going to show you how I've been running a little bit of combat in my simulations for my actual play one-on-one -on -one solo Dungeons and Dragons campaign with ChatGPT as the DM. If you haven't seen any of that yet, go up here and check it out. So let's hop in. I first start by telling it that it is an expert in whatever field I'm going to prompt it on. I got this from another resource. And uh, so here I say you are an expert at all things Dungeons and Dragons. You're also an expert dungeon master with all the knowledge and skills needed to run a fifth edition uh, campaign complete with roleplay and combat. That way it doesn't need to tell me like, oh, I'm a language bot, I can't do such a thing. I'm already prompting it, letting it know. Yes, you can. It responds as an AI model. I have a vast knowledge of rules and mechanics of Dungeons & Dragons of 5th edition, as well as experience in creating and running campaigns <laughs> with roleplay and combat elements. I will assist you with any questions or concerns you have about the game. Now, from here, it kind of goes into just giving me some DM tips, and I don't think that they're bad. Start with a strong premise, create memorable NPCs, encourage roleplay, balance combat, be flexible. But that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, so, I will prompt it again by saying as an expert create a fifth edition character complete with original name stats modifier and a list of abilities also include a spell list if it's appropriate for that class um, and then i misspelled include <laughs> include with include a brief backstory for the character i've been typing this all pretty fast i'm trying to get something out to you guys um maybe still not here yet and so i'm trying to be on duty for that so uh yeah forgive my um, literature, my literary mistakes. Moving on. So it creates me a 5e character, and it's good at this. It does this for me all the time. Um, so I'm Sariel, Elrid, a half-elf, rogue assassin. Um, basic, build out, high dex, ability, sneak attack, assassinate, thieves can't, expertise, cunning actions. All that looks fine. Um, I'll leave this up if you want to read the backstory for Sariel, just go ahead and pause here and read through that. Okay, now let's start a combat heavy campaign. I will make all the decisions and actions for Sariel. You will control the NPCs and other, other party members. Sure, uh, let's get started. Before we begin, can you provide some details about the campaign setting the, and the specific encounter we'll be facing? This will help create uh, appropriate NPCs and challenges for you to face. Already very cool. It's on board and just needs more information. I want to be in a well-balanced party of four. I want the campaign to be about overcoming the oppressive rule of the goblins in the area of the world that I'm in. The first encounter will be fighting our way out of this goblin jail and I want to make sure that you're making use of all the 5e rules and if I'm going to give you instructions outside of the game I'll give these brackets. I like to do that so that uh, I can actually just play as Serial in game, or at least as a player, and not as a player and a designer of the game. And then if I need to become a designer of the game and give more context for the game that we're playing, I can do it in brackets and then hop back in to character. We have our first error, and this is pretty common for ChatGPT. It says it has a good idea of what I want. It tells me I awaken in a dark cell and hear the sound of a goblin outside. Um, they captured me and my party and are planning to execute us. The cell door opens and the guard says, wake up prisoners, it's time to meet your end. And then I start trying to kill everyone. Um, but it's already speaking for Sariel and I told it not to. So again, I put in those um, brackets, you see, don't speak for Sariel. Uh, I will speak for him. Turns out actually Sariel is female. Um, also, do not attempt to end the story without me telling you it's over. It will try to just narrate this whole thing for us. So I wanted to make sure that it does not do that. And look, ChatGPT comes back and says, I apologize, I understand. Please let me know what actions Sariel would uh, take when they enter. So it even backs up to where um, where it spoke for Sariel. Well, first I wanna know who my party members are. How else am I gonna really do this if I don't know who uh, or what they are? So we have Theron Blackwood, half elf, male ranger. Okay, Kira, Nightshade, Tiefling, Warlock, and 
Balisar, Ironhide, Dragonborn, Barbarian. Okay, I don't know if I would call this a like well-balanced party, but uh, it, it'll do. We have a Barbarian that can get in there, which allows me to have Sneak Attack, and then we have uh, some good range there. I will also need to know what equipment I have and what my hit will be. So it tells me I have a Rapier or Short Sword. I'll go with the Rapier, Short Bow. Oh, nice, and it even shows me that I have a plus six, which is plus four for my dexterity, plus two for proficiency, and it gives me the weapon damage. Uh, which is great for both weapons. So I'm going to go ahead and holler at Balisar. Rush him. We will back you up and uh, ask it to roll initiative. Okay, this is cool. Um, this is great. The goblins are surprised by your sudden attack. Um, yeah, and you take them by surprise, uh, which would mean that I would roll with advantage, I think. Um, because I surprised them, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I just want to see how the mechanics are going. I don't want to get into the finer details, really. So with initiative, it rolls all of our initiative and puts us there. So I rolled the highest on initiative, and then it looks like it's broken it down pretty well and knows that I will go first. So uh, what actions would I like her to take? Well, first I want to know if any of my allies are adjacent to any of the goblins, because those are the ones I'd want to attack with sneak attack. It looks like not, though. Then I'm just going to move up to the nearest enemy, strike, use my bonus action to disengage, and then use the rest of my movement to move away. So you move up to the nearest goblin, attempt to strike, rolling a d20 plus 6. I rolled a 15 plus 6 is 21. Uh, the rapier deals 1d8, so the result... Oh, nice. So it shows me the result right there. That's sweet, so nine damage. And then as a bonus action, I disengage. I try to move. The goblin would like to make an attack of opportunity, but it can't because of my disengage action, which is awesome. So then the goblins attack. Okay, one goblin hits Theron, and the second misses Kira. So it looks like it'll be my turn again, so I copy and pasted the text. It doesn't seem to have liked that. Um, let's see, you did that last time. However, you still have your action this turn. Would you like to attack with your rapier or use a different action? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I would like to attack with my rapier again. This time I should get sneak attack if there is an enemy um, adjacent to one of my allies. Unfortunately, no, none of your allies are adjacent. Dang it. Okay. Well, I hit with a 24 and then I dealt 11 piercing damage. Most goblins don't have that many hit points so i'm surprised it's still alive but whatever i kind of like not knowing all the stats for the monsters so we'll go with that um let's see would you like to move away from the goblins using your bonus action to disengage that is cool yeah yep as a bonus action to disengage same thing going on there then it asked what i would like my party members to do it's interesting that it would ask me what i want them to do so i guess you could kind of um either fight on your own or fight controlling the whole party, which is also very cool. You could end up having a party of four that you are all the characters as you go up in to an adventure, which is very interesting and might be something I end up doing in the future when I have more time. So it looks like Balasar rushes up with the great sword and attacks for 22, which hits and he does 12 damage. Awesome. And then it asks me what the other two should do. I say that they should both attack range, which is fine because now I have Balasar there so that I can get sneak attack. Theron casts a firebolt, 23 to hit for five fire damage. And then Kira uh, hits with her longbow with a 26 and hits for 12 piercing damage. Okay, so now it tells us that the uh, goblins are looking quite hurt after the combined assault, which makes sense because they shouldn't have that many hit points. One comes up to swing, 15, swing and a miss. Um, the other takes a short bow shot at Kira and hits uh, for a solid five, and then it's back up to me. So I now want to go up and attack the goblin next to Balasar, knowing that I should get sneak attack. So let's see how it handles that. You move up and attack, 22 to hit. Your attack on the goblin hits and does 3d6 damage. Because of sneak attack, roll a d8 for the rapier damage and 3d6 for sneak attack. So uh, five is looks like is the rapier damage plus sneak attack. Gave me a total damage of 16. Sa, sa, sa. Done with that goblin, so goblin's defeated. 
uh, after you disengage. I didn't ask it to have me disengage. There's no one to actually disengage from since that dude is dead. Um, what would I like my team to do? I'll just have them attack the remaining goblin. On your party's turn, Balasar moves up and swings his great axe and rolls a 19 to hit for 14 damage. And wow, that's still standing. Um, next, Vera. I don't know who Vera is. See, this is a problem with ChatGPT. It messes up on some of the continuity and I'm sure that there are some prompts that I can try out to try to make it self-reference to make sure that doesn't happen. But for now, Vera is attacking and uh, yeah, anyways. And there did it again, Lyrian. I don't know who Lyrian is, but uh, she rolled a lot of damage and ended up defeating the last of the goblin. Congrats, you have successfully defeated the goblin guards and escaped the jail. What would you like to do next? So, some things to think about. The combat itself was ran fairly well, like the combat mechanics, but there are some continuity errors in the names and possibly even some of the weapons that I saw going on. So I will keep tinkering and we'll see if we can't get closer to a perfect combat. All right, I'll see you next time. Peace.